Slovakia 1, Belgium nil. Upset of the tournament. We have the first one. The first one has fallen. Someone has beaten the dust. Another one bites the dust. What an impressive performance by Slovakia. Um, the squad after, just after around six, seven minutes, their fastest goal at the Euros. This is probably their biggest game, like the biggest result in their history. It has to be up there. They were they were just really, they were really, 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 really up for this one. Um, Belgium, I don't know. I don't know. Like, what is Doku doing back there? Doku is trying to, like, play... First of all, it's a throw-in. It's at the back. Just play it short. For someone who comes from a pep system, there's some things I shouldn't expect you to be doing. Why are you kicking the ball across the... Like, across the... So, there's zones, like, in, in a pep system, for example, right? So... I'm trying to explain. So, if the field is this way, right? That's the goal, that's the goal. He divides it into three zones. One, two, three. The thing with Pep is, you never pass, the ball never passes across the zone. Rarely. Even crossfield balls never happen. Same thing with Ateta. Especially a ball on the ground, in your own third, like it doesn't happen. And those are some of the things that, when someone like Doku does it, you're just like, what are you doing, bro? Like, what are you doing? So yeah, he decides he's just going to pass that ball um, it was a really, really dumb mistake. I'm trying to remember who got the ball from him. Uh, 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 uh. I can't remember who it was. But anyway, the ball comes to... Um, Shra- no, actually, Schranz. Yes, the ball comes to Schranz, who was leading the line. And Schranz just does a really nice flick. Does a really nice flick. The ball comes into Kuchka. Kuchka shoots, keeper saves, and then Schranz is still there too. Uh, put the rebound in and just like that it's one nil. Lukaku had earlier missed a chance. I feel like today we got the full Lukaku experience. Like at the beginning of the game he's first uh, first, first of all and I've said first of all many times. Tedesco one thing he did is that he made sure Lukaku didn't press alone. He's very bad at that. So when they were off the ball they were playing with a 4 4 so, so to speak. So Trossard was pressing with Lukaku up front which was good. It covered him. But we got the full Lukaku experience. You get chances, you get him running into good positions, and then you get poor fast touches, you get disallowed goals. Um, like it was, it was, you get uh, like signs of strength, and you're like, wow, I forgot how strong Lukaku was. And then there are times when the ball came over, and his first touch was just, his first touch is a through ball. Like, yo, Lukaku. But to be fair to him, he scored twice, both goals were disallowed, no fault of his own. Um, one was disallowed after, uh, obviously, we're going to talk about the handball, but the other one was disallowed because of, what was that disallowed for? I forget. But, yeah. The 4 2 press up front is really, really worked for Lukaku, so he doesn't have to press by himself. That way you don't expose him, you don't tie him out. Again, he's a big lad. He's going to get tired really quickly. Uh, I think Trossard was, had an average game, but when they moved him to the middle of the park, he it made a big difference. Having him and... KDB in the middle of the park made a very, very big difference. When KDB has someone like that in the middle of the park, like he, the onus is not on him, you know. Same thing as Man City. Like, he's going to play with another eight, and it's like he's sharing that responsibility or with Foden or with someone. So, again, moving forward, that has to be the way forward. Bakayoko came on. He really gave the team impetus. He was good. He had a goal. Not, not a goal. He, had a, he came on. He had a shot cleared off the line. Of like the very, very impressive last ditch defending. The defender then runs into his own defender's knee and then uh was was down for a bit, but he eventually got up. So yeah, Bakayoko was really good off the bench. Onana um actually, yeah, was the reason why the goal was disallowed. So it was a corner, it was a short corner, then Trossard and KDB. Trossard fixed like he's going to give it back to KDB. He decides to cross it, he crosses the ball. Onana, the back post, headers it down, Lukaku scores. And Lukaku was offside. But again, no fault of his own because things happen quickly, right? And he has to be in that area of the field. So we really, really can't fault him for that. It was really tight. Um, the second one, obviously, it was the handball. Um, a bit controversial because we were watching the game here. And some people say the ball didn't change trajectory. But the rules are very clear, I think, as of a few years ago. Like last year or the year before, I can't remember. Anytime the ball touches an opponent, uh, offensive, an offensive player's hand on the way to a goal, that goal is disallowed. Like there's just no, there there's no debate. Like they made it very clear. So yeah, the goal was disallowed. 
something interesting. I think it's been talked about, but we had never seen it. The when the ball touches the player's hand, they had like a a waveform bear in the corner. So the thing about these balls is they have a chip inside, right? And that that chip is the same one that is used to mark all the offsides because now we're using the automated offside. So same thing here. The moment there's contact on the ball, and this technology is very similar to what they have in cricket because sometimes you want to call a player out, but you can only call him out if the bat touches the ball. And sometimes that contact is very minimal. They have to use that audio. I forget what it's called. But yes, more or less the same thing. So the moment he touches his hand, the wave, wave form spikes, and that shows you that it's a handball. Again, those are now that's factual. We can't argue with that, right? Like it's not subjective anymore. It's a fact. The ball touches his hand, um, and I think you could also see it even without the the technology. But yeah, Belgium. That's this. This this was a shock result. I don't know who they're playing next. They are in the same group as Romania and Ukraine. The Romania game now is becomes even even more crucial. I don't know if they can beat Romania. Just seeing how Romania have been playing. So Belgium are playing Romania next. Yeah, that game is going to be hectic, hectic for them. Um, they have to win. They don't have a choice. Whereas for Slovakia, this puts them in a very good position. Again, as we said, <coughs> the four best that place teams qualify automatically. And by getting three points in your first game, if they just get another game, they'll more or less give Ukraine a, Ukraine a run for their money. But yeah, they're more or less assured a spot in the in the round of sixteen already. 